the committee recommends that I should go for leadership training. Mm. And um, they even there's a, a, t- a group in the US that does this. It's called CCL. Mm. And I think that was one of the best five days I've ever spent in my life. Because, um, <coughs> yeah, they said, yeah, go for this CCL training. So I register and then they do this. CCL is? Uh, Center for Creative Leadership. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I don't know, I've never told them, maybe I should be a testimony for them. Mm. Really, it was really, really the best training mm. and coaching that I got, I'd, ever, I'd ever get. Mm. And when I went, I didn't know what to expect. I just went. Mm. And so really what happened is when, as I've said, in retrospect, I started seeing the two phases of my leadership until that time. Mm. And I like my eyes, it was almost like, you know, the clouds parting and you say, my goodness, mm. what happened to me? Who am I? Mm. And feeling like I'm a person that I didn't like at mm. all. Mm. And how can that, how could, how is that reflecting on the team at the mm. mm. That That's when this like realization happened in right. my head that I had right. become a different person. Mm. There were like two sides of me mm. and I preferred the first part, mm. the first side, and I didn't like the second phase of mm. me. Mm. And so I need to go back. I need to find a way of going back to mm. that person mm. who I was mm. in at the beginning of my leadership journey. Mm. And how it happened was quite interesting. So they do the 360, you mm. know, yeah. your gra- your supervisees, mm. uh, they do this and your supervisor and then mm. your peers. Mm. And then I, uh, <laughs> it was a, it was a group of about twenty five people. I, I think I was probably the only person from Africa. Mm. Most of them were US based, mm. um, you know, managers, mm. new mm. appointees, some people from academia. Mm. And when they gave us the results from the three sixty, mm. some people were in tears. People were crying because they had really really terrible mm. assessments. Mm. And you could see because there was red, red was bad, and then green was good. Mm. So my report mm. was mostly green. Mm. It was like there were some pinks here and there, but I didn't mm. have some people would open the report and see like red everywhere. <laughs> so my report was good. And so I opened the report, people are crying, you know, they say you can take time off, read it, and then we shall we continue in the afternoon, and then now we can see what to do with this report. So I read through my report, I'm scanning it, I'm like, okay, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, not bad. Hmm, interesting. And I'm scanning through. Then after some time, I started noticing some patterns. <clears throat> Between me and my supervisor, there was almost perfect concurrence. The way I saw myself is the way the, my supervisor saw me. Like almost everything we agreed. Where I thought I was strong, where I thought I was weak, everything was almost perfect mm. concurrence. Mm-hmm. With my peers, there was it was almost like my boss. Mm. There, there was not too much um, uh, sort of Difference. divergence between what I, how I saw myself mm. and how um, they saw me. Mm. Then I reached my direct reports. Mm. So I had picked some direct reports and then other people who I had supervised at some point, mm. and, but they were not my direct reports at that time. They were like six or seven people. I say, what? I start looking at things. I was like, oh my God. Okay, the average score is like 3.5, which is a green, but I started seeing a pattern so in this assessment, when there's a difference in the scores of more than one, I think, they put a star on that item. So the item may be like, um, this person is honest. The overall score is like three, but you are rated by seven people. So if one person rated you one and the other person rated you four, they will put a star. Mm-hmm. So I think if, is, if there's a difference within the same item of more than two, more than two, they will put a star. So when I started reading the assessment of my direct of the direct reports and other members of APHRC, mm. like 80% of them had stars on it. Hmm. They were green, yes, but there were stars on them. So, so, mm-hmm. so which told me that in so many things, one person saw me as a one and another, another one person totally as a four. Different. Yeah. One person saw me as a two, mm. and another person saw me as a five. Mm. As I said, almost 80% of all the ratings from that group had stars on them. Then I was like, wow. I so knew. your experience <laughs> with people was people very, sought, very different. People saw two different me's. Mm. And I knew the people who had asked to mm. you. Mm. And then I don't think I remember who had, um, I don't think they tell you who has responded, but I knew most mm. of them had responded, so I could tell. Mm. And then I was like, wow. 
Then you start reading some of the, the comments. There are some open-ended yeah. questions. And then I see some of the ratings. They were like, I think 11 leadership domains. And where they, they, people put comments, I'm like, what? This is what people see? <laughs> okay, the overall report is good, but you start reading it and like, what? This is what people see? That I'm mean and I'm distant and I'm unkind and I'm impatient. I was like, oh my God. At first I was so upset. I was, I would then, but I was like, ah, whatever. This, this is a good, it's a good report generally. Mm -hmm. But then I went to bed and I opened it again and I looked at mm -hmm. it and I, those stars kept on jumping at me. Mm -hmm. And then at some point it hit me, as you've said, people see two sides of me. Mm -hmm. Because I could tell that the people who are more gracious mm -hmm. in their assessment mm -hmm. are people who I had supervised mm -hmm. right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. There are people who had grown. I was still supervising some of them, but mm. they remember that me. Mm. And so maybe they were a little bit more gracious, even though I had changed, mm. they could still give me the benefit of doubt because mm. they, they remembered the, the kind, the patient, mm. the mentoring, the mm. nurturing me, they remembered that. So mm. I, I assumed that they were being more mm. gracious. People had picked up later and supervised. They didn't know that part of me. So mm. they were seeing a completely different side of me. Mm. And it's, as I said, it was almost like, you know, when the sky is part and open, I was like, wow. Mm. I said, this is what had happened. Mm. I could explain it. I could rationalize it. Because mm. as I've said, I could say, yes, of course, I was protecting myself and life is tough and it was stressful. But does it matter <coughs> when this is people's experience of you? It doesn't matter. Mm. <laughs> so if people see you as uncaring and unkind and mean and impatient, it mm. doesn't matter mm. whether I can explain why. Yeah. I'm yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, it didn't matter. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, they say it's not how, it's how you really make others feel that, 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 that people remember. That's re re yeah. remembered most. Yeah. And so all the anxieties I had about the organization, somehow I could find like a, a cloud, like a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. I could see how me being that leader that people knew very many years before could solve all these problems, mm. workload, mm. burnout, mm. like all this work-life balance. Mm. There was so much that, uh, of course, this was not the only thing. There was a lot of coaching around um, institutional culture, mm. how people can be apathetic about mm. an institution because they don't feel like they are respected and they're listened to, so they just sort of put themselves out. We had a narrative of they, they did this, they did this, they decided this, they said this, mm. they was us leadership and then everybody else had put themselves outside mm. this circle mm. and all problems were they mm. they did this they mm. did this so those were things which in the end i could see how everything was connected mm. and mm. so i went for you know the last coaching session mm. and we started we started having a conversation actually like this mm. the person asked me about mm. my leadership journey mm. and all this mm. then when i was talking in mid-sentence and i stopped like oh my god it's all clear to me <laughs> what mm. i need to do mm. he's like what i said it's all clear to me i said what i said i need to be a nicer person than i've been just like that mm. i said oh my god just like that honestly mm. and the person said wow that i'm good you figured this out because most people figure it out later when they go and they mm. try some of the things we've coached you about mm. that i'm glad you figured it out today and mm. it's for me it was very clear to mm. me but that's all mm. I needed to be. It's so amazing <laughs> that, you know, it boils down to the basics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I can't, I, I mean, as I said, I, I take risks. I do. I take risks. Mm. I can say, I think we're going to do this mm. because I can, maybe the algorithm mind <laughs> mm. of medical school, mm. I can say, if this happens and this happens and that happens and this happens mm. and this happens, I think we get this outcome. Mm. So we're going for it. Mm. And then when you see things happening, like, oh, okay, actually it worked. So mm. I know there, there was a risk, but mm. if I know there's a, uh, what is it called? Uh, an off-ramp. Yeah. If things go <laughs> south, we can always go back and exactly. say, let's go back to our yeah. our thing. So, but let's go for now. Mm. If things happen, this is this is the off-ramp. Yeah. So we'll get off and get back. Mm. So we don't, um, nothing, nothing topples completely. Mm. So honestly, by the time I came back, mm. I was so relaxed. I was mm. like, this mm. is what needs to happen. Mm. And what needs to happen, if you talk to people at the PHC, they'll tell you about the culture shift. Mm. I said we need to change the institutional culture. Mm. <clears throat> and the institutional culture, I knew what needs to change. I didn't know how or who, but I knew that this has to change. And I could connect 
how a change in institutional culture mm. was going to solve all these long-standing mm. challenges. Mm. And um, so I came, sat down and wrote like a message about institutional culture. Mm.